everyone, my name is Alex Walker. I'm the CEO of Eastar Resources. Eastar is a London Stock Exchange list, uh, listed company under the code EST. We're operating in Kazakhstan, focused on being Kazakhstan's next copper producer. Copper is a commodity for the future. It's fully expected to be the major mineral required for the energy transition and very soon to be in structural deficit. As the uh, CEO of one of the base metals divisions of the world's largest um, trading company said, what's the value of something the whole world needs, but, uh, but nobody has. So a little bit about Kazakhstan. Uh, Kazakhstan is already in its own right a major metals producer. It's first in the world for uranium, second for chromite, and 10th in the world for copper with 6% of the world's production. We believe that's gonna increase very, very soon. Very, very good historical data availability. Lots of work uh, has been done across the country in the, uh, in the Soviet era. So before the 1990s, gives a very, very good understanding of metal, um, metallogenetic belts, and it's just purely lacked um, exploration spend. Fantastic in terms of operating costs. You can mine for as little as a dollar, a dollar fifty a ton here. It's a hundred dollars a meter for core drilling, fifty cents a liter for diesel, and two and a half cents a kilowatt hour. Truly, is one of the best places in the world to build a mine. Uh, in terms of infrastructure globally, um, it's two and a half times faster to move goods between China and Europe through the middle corridor, which is principally in Kazakhstan, than it is to go via the seaborne route. Um, in terms of stability, EU and UK have very recently signed supply agreements for critical mineral supply with Kazakhstan because they realise that this is a place that has access to these minerals and the capacity to deliver them where they're required. Um, and as I mentioned before, it's significantly underexplored um, in terms of uh, geophysics and modern exploration techniques. There's been a significant lack of that over the last 50 years, and which is something that we, we are now able to exploit. And the majors are seeing this as well. Rio Tinto's here, Glencore have two operating mines here. Fortescue has been operating here in, uh, since uh, the same time that we have. And very recently, ba Barrick and First Quantum have announced that they'll be entering the country as well. So principally, where are we? First of all, we're on the Rudne Altai uh, Volcanogenic Massive Sulphide Belt, a huge, famous Volcanogenic Massive Sulphide Belt with over a thousand million tonnes of, of ore already discovered on the belt. Within our licence, we have two unmined historic deposits, one of which is the Vakuba deposit, which we've been processing the data for. And there are four historic, very high grade mines, including Pokrovskoy, which was mined at the equivalent of about 25% copper. Uh, we have a lot of infra infrastructure already on the license. Road, power, rail, water, accommodation in Vakuba, meaning that the capacity to convert this to, to a producing um, deposit is, is significantly enhanced and the capacity to operate. On top of that, there's additional processing capacity in the region. CAS Minerals have a, a processing plant 52 kilometres by road from the Fakuba deposit, and Glencore, by their 70% owned CAS Inc, have one that's uh, 110 kilometres. They also have a smelter that's 70 kilometres by road to Ustamanagor. So we're not going to be shy of processing capacity should we require that um, uh, from a toll treatment or mine gate sale uh, potential. And the last is serious grade and scale. So these are the other mines that have, have been operating in the past and are currently operating in the region. And what you see is just absolutely phenomenal grades. Artem Yevsky is the equivalent of 6% copper, Nikolovsky 4.5%. Otiski 3%, Bulozovskoy 5%. I mean, Bulozovskoy at 5% is more than 10 times the global average of copper um, uh, percentage produced at 0.5%. So wonderful, wonderful ore bodies within the region that we hope to discover more of. Looking at the Vakuba VMS uh, project, we have a jork exploration target of 19 to 23 million tonnes at 1.4 to 1.9% copper equivalent. Now, this is no ordinary exploration target, as you can see from the diagram. More than 42,000 metres of historical drilling has been digitised, which we've spent two years collecting and digitising and verifying via geological traverses. So this is a very, very high quality exploration target. It's principally copper, a little bit of zinc and lead, but we also know that there's gold and silver in the deposit, which was not assayed for, and therefore is not made up, uh, not making up part of the resource model, but we know it to be in there through historical metallurgical test work. And so if that does come in at the same grades as has been tested for previously, it would bump up our copper equivalent to around two and a half percent. We have resource upside potential. We did a helicopter uh, electromagnetic survey in 2022 and has given us some targets, um, a long strike out to the west of our existing deposit. And also we see IP and geochemical anomalies trend out to the northeast as well in the, in the general direction of, of all body trend. 
So what are we gonna do? We're gonna start drilling. And in fact, drilling has started today. A 3000 meter program, we believe will verify this historical data. We'll conduct some infill drilling and hopefully convert some of these open pits and the entire deposit itself to a jork resource. And so if we can verify that, within the next six to 12 months, we will be releasing a jork resource to the market, which I think will be a huge, huge valuation uplift for the company. How much of a valuation uplift? Well, here's an example. Uh, Eastar are currently trading on a, on a diluted basis at $11.50 per tonne in the ground. Our peers are trading at about $147 per tonne in the ground. So it's a 13 times valuation uplift of the company spending half a million dollars drilling 3,000 metres to verify historical data, which is a fantastic, fantastic return on investment for anyone involved. We're very, very excited by that. And so we're very looking forward to the rigs, uh, the rigs getting turning. So just a quick recap, why invest in ESTAR? First of all, we already have an existing deposit which we're looking to verify, which we don't believe is valued in to our share price one iota. Second of all, we have significant exploration upside. It's unlikely to stop at 19 to 23 million tonnes. Both the Fukuba deposit itself could be larger, but also, as I mentioned before, our other exploration targets within 803 square kilometres of existing licences, many of which we've been working up to date and hopefully will be drill ready in the not too distant future as well. Existing processing capacity and infrastructure is absolutely fantastic. If we are looking for a very, very low cost development opportunity, then this would present that by simply selling ore to two mills that have existing capacity and are easily within trucking distance of our deposit. And lastly, drilling is underway. So we have short-term catalysts in the very, very near future. Literally the rigs arrived on site yesterday. And so we expect to be um, uh, announcing or showing drill core to the market within the coming weeks and months. Thank you very much.